What's the big importance of winning material? Why is it so important for us to win material? What does it give us? Someone will tell me that. If not, I cannot go on. Yes? They have a bigger advantage because they might have less material. Well, they will have less, more, they will have less material, right? So you have a bigger army. Do you prefer to be commanding a bigger army or a smaller army? Bigger. Mm, that's the logic, right? You prefer your team to be bigger than the opponent or less? Doesn't matter what sport you're playing. Bigger, right? So that's most, most, most basic logic will start applying here. So, how are we going to win material? Most basic thing we are going to capture, right? Is the, yeah, we're not having some rooks or knights or queens dropping from the sky. We're actually going to capture and get more material. This is one thing that is really important. And for that, we discussed several tactical ideas to win material. For example, would a fork be a way to win material? What is a fork? Who can tell me? What's when, when one piece attacks two pieces at the same time. And your main goal is going to be? Winning Capture. one piece. Winning material. For example, who is the, which piece is the one that we see most forks with? There's one specific piece. Knight. Exactly. A knight. A knight. When a knight actually comes, for example, why knight to this square, attacking, checking the king, and attacking the rook. That is one. That is fork. Which other? Which other ideas we have touched last week? Tactical ideas. Which are they? Skewers. Skewers. Excellent. Same idea, right? We said it's like the food. We were actually hungry last week. We are, amazingly enough, we are still hungry now. It's lunchtime. But why, why do we mention it? It's just like a skew. There's several pieces lined up on a line or a diagonal. And we have a way to attack them and win. Material. So, okay, excellent. We have forks, we have skews. What else do we have? Pins. Pins. And do you remember two types of pins? There are two types of pins, right? Yeah, absolute pin and... Normal pin. What is an absolute pin? Like when the pin piece cannot move. Why, why can't it move? Let's just show it super but duper. If it moves, the king will be in check. Excellent. So this bishop is pinned, right? Yeah. He cannot move, doesn't matter what. If, even if he has to take a queen or... Because the king is just behind it. Let's say this was the position. The bishop is still pinned, can, but can he move? Yes. Yeah. Would it be smart for him to move? No. no. But he can. So that's the difference between an absolute pin, you can not move at all, and just a pin. Okay. It's not smart to play that move. Perfect. So what is a discovered check? Okay, so who can tell me? Someone else. Does White have a good discovered check in this position? Yes. Bishop d4. Excellent move, bishop d4. The rook is checking the king, and the bishop is threatening. Queen. And you're going to win material. So all those ideas, they are pretty much the main ones. We can think about some smaller ones, but really forks and pins and skewers and discovered checks or discovered attack, they are really going to be our main ideas for winning material. Now, other type of tactical ideas are used to go after the king. Not to win material. We said the logic is, and in most games, that's really what we see. When you see best players in the world play or decent players, well, it doesn't matter which level. There is no really checkmate, right? I mean, Anand, I don't know how many times, I cannot think even when he really got checkmated. What we do have is that one player is under huge attack, being under a lot, a lot of pressure. In order to get out of the attack, he gives away some material and then he gets into a position that is down a pawn or a knight or two pawns, something like that, and losing because he's down material. So really, 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 there is no checkmate in Grandmaster's World, or very, very few checkmates. Grandmaster's World champion, strong players. Because they will defend, they will not get checkmate, but in order to defend, they will have to pay material. So that's the important part. We touched last time much more the topic of material. Let's touch the topic of the king this time. Now, we have several ways to attack the king, to checkmate it, right? One of the ways, and this is what we will start doing a few puzzles here, is 
Who can tell me what the topic here will be? Perfect, background checkmate. Okay, we've done our homework. So this is one very, very important idea that we see in endless, endless kids just like you, games and tournaments, endless. One of the players get to have one of his heavy pieces to the back rank, and the black king is, or white king of course, get checkmated. Before we even touch the move that you was played, you know what, let's first see it. So, we want to get our rook into the back rank. And we actually can take the queen, but is taking the queen that, in that impressive? No, no. Well, it's just going to be an exchange, right? It's just going to be an exchange. Queen take queen, pawn take queen. Yes, white did get something. I, I just wonder, this is not our topic, but can someone tell me in principle, what did white gain tiny bit by capturing? Yes? Right, and double pawns, it's completely another topic. Double pawns in general are not really bad. They're not really bad, but double isolated pawn, almost always really bad. For example, if this was the position, this, this, is, not, this is not that much, because you have a complex of pawns here that cover a lot of squares. So double pawns, by definition, not really bad. I mean, sometimes they can be bad, sometimes they can be actually powerful. But double isolated pawn, right? Isolated means there's nothing on the side, right? They are by themselves. They are almost always very weak. So that was excellent. Double isolated pawn. For example, black pawn can never control this square. He has a big hole over f5. Even the king, tiny weak. But that would not be that much for white. Most likely this game would end up in a draw. But white is still getting exactly the advantage that you mentioned. But before I could even say a word, already several of you pointed out that, yes? What would white play? White would play queen takes a Right, exactly. White sees that black has no escaping squares. No escaping squares at all. So how can he get to the back rank? To pay price of a queen is meaningless when you are in checkmate, right? You will pay any price, it's just the game is over. So white gave material, but we don't even look at that. And then rook e8 is checkmate. Yes? Oh, no. Yeah, I, I've seen that many of you immediately suggested it. So a quick question. A quick question. What is usually the easiest way? And many, many times you see experienced players just play this move it's not really necessary immediately to have that move on the board, but it's kind of a very prophylactic move. Just, you know what? It's healthy to have it there. Yes? Like the more the pawns, you move it up. So if you have, like, you think you have a back or checkmate, you can move up. Exactly. And usually it is the H pawn, right? Mm -hmm. Which is something like, you know, you have a flashlight in your home. There's no electricity breakdown right now, but when there will be, you don't need to start thinking about, well, where you find candles, right? You just go and you can use it. This is basically like one of those moves. They're just healthy, healthy to have in the position. You might use it, you might not. Actually, much more than a flashlight that, I don't know, maybe once a year you do get problems with electricity. This you get a lot, a lot, a lot. Actually, some of the greatest game moves by great players were played just this quiet, tiny move that at some point in the future, some point, there's a very, very famous game between Viktor Kochnoi, that was three times vice world champion, against actually Boris Spassky, that was world champion. And Kochnoi played at some position incredible, tiny, slow move, h3, just so in many moves ahead, in a false line, you will have this possibility to play king h2 and 1. It was, if I'm not mistaken, a game in their match in 1977. So. Very, very correct to this pawn. White is to play. Is black to play? Is his move simple? Is black's move simple in this position? What would black play if it is his move? Yes? Um, he would play G queen g2. He would play queen g2, right? That's checkmate. One, checkmate. one of the simplest moves, ba extremely basic pattern. That's actually the next topic that we will see after checkmate on the back rank. We will see how to checkmate a king that castled just very basic checkmate patterns. So queen g2 is checkmate. Okay, 
does white have a way to stop queen g2, first of all? Yes. How? For example, if your knight was here, you could have told me, hey, I'm going to play knight e3. OK, you're controlling this square, right? So you're stopping queen g2. But the knight is here, kind of far away from there. Yes? What would you play with white? Um, king f1. Ah! Right? We cannot, we cannot get this one to be played. Yes? Is it going to stop queen g2 checkmate? Unless, unless you have an I file, bless you, unless you can go after queen g2 to I file, this, this is going to be checkmate, right? You are correct that if you have an extra move here, if this is the position, you can actually play rook g1 and cover this square. Yes? But are you, are you getting to g2? OK, so, so I would look at the position and say, after a minute, white cannot cover g2. Yes? But, but how can white get a pawn back? Why, 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 white cannot get his pawns to control the g2 square. So let's say this. We looked at the position for a bit. White cannot control the g2 square. Simple. So white is about to get checkmated unless, yes? Um, bishop take c7. OK. It's a check. Does it guarantee anything? Not. Maybe it does. Well, let's see. So you want to play bishop take c7. Black has one move to play, right? Black will play rook take bishop. What will then white play? OK, great. You, got, you bought yourself one more move to leave. But is it more than that or not? Yes? Wait, I think I have to, you know, what I just thought was, well, I thought of doing rook a8 check. Rook a8 check. OK. But if, you know what? Actually, let's put a pawn here just so nobody after it will say, hey, Ron, and you forgot to put this pawn. It's the same idea, but there is actually a big importance here. OK. Yes? Knight takes c7. No, but is knight takes c7 a forced move? What does it mean by forced move? Does your opponent have to do something? No. I know what you want. Yeah. You want knight takes c7, and then you are saying something that I've seen about everyone, everyone. There was no kid that I've done chess with that at some point didn't do exactly the same in many times. Exactly, exactly the same thing. I capture something so, what's the logic? I capture something so, I can my opponent has to capture back. Mm -hmm. Seriously? Does he have to? No. Is his job to help you? No. I, but that's exactly the thing. I capture something so, and it happens to players that are five years older than all of you and have played chess for many years and are experts. Very strong kids. But it's that way of thinking. Oh, it took here, I have to take here. Uh -uh. Uh -uh. This is one square out of another 63 that are available on the board. I can take, but then I know you will be smiling at me and play rook d8. And I know, but you know, this, as cute as you are, right now we are enemies, we are playing. I'm not here to help you. So what will I play with black? Ah, what will I play with black? What was our original idea? What was Black's original idea? Where did this square disappear? Did, did, did you take the pawn and I say, Mama mia, I took on c7, now I'm not going to checkmate him? Not really, right? I'm going to play queen g2 checkmate. So, not really scared. OK. But actually, doing, through the process of doing puzzles, we get to think a lot about what are we thinking right and wrong, and what's the process. The process is, much, is in most of the situation, what's going to lead you to the right move, nothing else. So not going to help. Yes? I actually think bishop takes c7 is really good. 
But after rook take? Rook d8. OK, what would black play after it? I know it's difficult. We are going to see if we can do that without moving the pieces. It's a lot of moves. Then we will move it. So bishop take, you know what? Let's just make one step. Bishop take, OK. Does black have to take here or not? He has to take, has to. Well, that's a different story then. Well, he is going to take. He has to. But it's not checkmate. It's not checkmate. OK, but now rook d8, right? Yeah, sure. Uh -uh. Does, how many moves does black have in this position? One. Now, if white has something to show here, he will be very happy. If he doesn't? He's toast. Yes. Rook a8. Ah. Was this your, your move as well? No. No, what you were going to play? Okay. Rook to h8. But this is a checkmate threat, right? Plus, I you can just capture it. But let's see. Rook to a8. Very good. What is black going to play here? has to take. And checkmate. And checkmate. Yeah. Oh. So we got checkmate on the back rank, only that it involved much, much, much more effort. Right? If you're going to think you are going to have in a game positions, OK, I'm going to, do, to play the amazing move. I'm going to lift my rook, put it on the back rank, and it's going to be checkmate. OK. Well, that's OK for the first tournament that you will play chess for the second one. This is for much, much, much higher level. White had to work, and he worked four moves, four, involving giving his bishop, then giving the rook, but got black in a checkmate net on the back rank. By the way, we did study something super important, actually, from this puzzle. I didn't intend it to be. We studied something about forcing moves. They are the most important part when we calculate in chess. Why is that? Because if I, if he has to play something, is it going to be easier for me to anticipate the future? He has to. Instead of looking and saying, think, I will play this move, then my opponent can play this, 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 and that, then I can play this, 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 then he can play. We will get so, so many possibilities. This is actually what happens a lot in chess. The maximum that we can narrow how many possibilities we have to calculate. It doesn't mean that it's good for us, but it means that it is easier for us to calculate. This was a straight line. Let's look at it again, and you tell me if it was a straight line or not. By straight line, I mean black had to play every move that he did play. He had to. So you tell me at what point black had more than one move. White played bishop takes c7. How many moves does black have to play here? How many moves can he play? One. Two? One. Everyone agrees on one. White played rook d8. How many moves can black play here? One. One. So we are, we are still in a straight line. By straight line, I mean I walk, walk, walk. I don't need to make any turn, right? There are no two possibilities. One major possibilities. OK. White played rook a8. How many moves can black play here? So I continue my straight line. It's very easy, very, very easy to see. Well, much easier. Let's use that term. Much easier to see straight, distance, no trees, nothing bother you, no turns, no curves than anything else. And that's it. So from this puzzle, actually, we touch this, bless you, we touch this super important topic of forcing move. White to play here. First of all, is black threatening checkmate? Yes. Yes. Where is black threatening checkmate? Actually, on two squares, right? Excellent. Both of those moves are going to be checkmate. OK. White can maybe, st white, white can think about playing a move like this. Maybe running with the queen. Oh, 
okay, that's a possibility. It's actually not going to be that great for white, but it's a possibility to get out of checkmate. Does white have something more powerful? And I will give you a clue. It involves the back rank. It involves something that's going to happen on the back rank. Yes? King to C1. King to C1? Yeah. We said this is a decent move to get out of checkmate. But I want more. Well, white would be worse in this position. It'd probably be losing. But it's, you're correct. It's a way to get out of checkmate. Agree. I want more for white. Yes? Queen to A3 actually will protect against Queen B2 checkmate. But we mentioned that there are two checkmates that black is threatening. One is queen b2, and the other one is queen a1. Queen a1. And queen a3 is not going to cover the a1 square. Yes? Queen takes three a White will play queen. OK, so you're giving your queen for a rook. When you give your queen for a rook, you better have something to show for it, right? Do you think you have something to show for it? Yeah. OK, let's see what you have. So you're going to take, OK, and OK, I'm going to take. Well, you started, so you have to finish. What now? A6 check. Bishop a By the way, let, let's do it right here, step by step. So after we played queen take, how many moves does black have here? How many league? One move. One. Uno. One move. And you want to play bishop a6 check. How many moves does black have here? One. One. Which one? King b8, and now you're going to play with white? Rook c8, checkmate. Excellent job. And once again, our straight line, making it much easier for us to calculate, right? We have to see the idea, which is not easy, and especially starting with a combination that gives away our queen, just by instinct, is not something that we should, well, think about giving away material. But excellent job. Black king is left defenseless on the back rank. OK, this was one idea involving the back rank. Actually, this was very forcing idea in a just winning the game. Other ideas will in be going after the king. And we are going from, I think, some of the things that are most practical ones. This is what I want to touch today. Maybe next week we will touch some other ideas and just some calculations, principles. Let's look at this position. We are going to touch something that we will continue. We will continue next week. So whoever is going to show up next week, we will continue from this point. Let's look at this position. You know what? And we'll be super fair. So what's the material advantage in this position? Material, uh, material situation, sorry. Or does one side have material advantage or not? Yes? But white has in return? Mm -hmm. But what does white have in return for the bishop? Um, two knights. How, how, do we, how do we calculate material? When you look at a position, when you look at a position, and someone asks you, like me, hey, who has more material? What's the, the right way to do that? Yes. It's even material, but the easiest. Overall, but black has a material advantage on the king side. Yes, but, but if we look overall, and actually, how should we do it in the easiest way? Just like when we see a number written, OK, we will start by looking at the high pieces. So white has a queen, black has a queen, right? Are they even? We start always with the high pieces. It makes it much easier. White has two rooks. Black has two rooks. We don't need to count it. We know that both sides are equal, right? So we can throw it away. White has a knight. Black has a knight. Black has a bishop, and white has a knight. So really, when you want, and let's just complete it, white has five pawns, and black has five pawns. So the material is equal, with the slight indifference that black has a bishop, 
and write as a knight. And overall, totally equal material. Everything else is just the same. Like you have an equation, everything same, 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 same. Finally, you have two last parts that are there. OK, so equal material. Both kids have castle. And that's going to be the topic that we will start a bit now and just take it a, immediately from there next week. Playing against the castle king. I will let you think for a minute. Maybe you can come up and tell me which idea white has in this position. Uh, if you, how, do you have checkmate in one move? You have an idea for checkmate? How? How will you play checkmate in one move? Queen to h7 would be, would be checkmate. But the knight is there, OK. But the knight is there. Perfect, OK. So we need, we need our, I remember that. We need our parents' help sometimes. OK. So parents helped everything. They showed the idea. Queen take h7. That's true. This is the idea. And actually, we will speak about the way to think, because that was very important, what happened now. But is queen take h7 checkmate? No, because the knight is defending. Yes. First, white can, uh, first, if white plays knight d5, it will um, probably rip, it will get rid of the knight. That's exactly the way. And you used even the term of getting rid of the knight. But by the way, before we're going to play it on the board, let's say, before we're going to play it on the board, 95 is actually a brilliant move and is winning the game. Let's say that, you know, where are we going to put this queen? I don't know what's a decent spot for this queen. Let's put it just for our purposes. We're going to put it on here. OK. And we, we will not allow white to move a rook to d1, which is best move. Would, you know, no, but actually this is not, this is not a great spot. Let me think, where would I want to put my knight that is very good. I will put it, OK, I will have to tiny, tiny bit modify the position, because if not, it's not going to work that easy. Let me put this one here and the bishop and the bishop here. OK, we tiny, tiny bit modify the position. The same idea as before applies. Queen take h7 would be checkmate, but the knight is here. So a question, would knight d5 be such amazingly powerful, strong move in this position. Well, what would black play here? What would black play if white plays knight d5? The threat, you mentioned it. You want to eliminate the knight and then checkmate. OK, that would be under tactical ideas of remove of the defender, def whatever you want to call it. OK. But does black have a way to defend here? Well, yes? G6. G6. Is the knight here defended? Defended by the bishop. G6 and pretty much nothing for white here. Not much. Even take the pawn is not so clear. S what is the difference? What is the difference in our position after 95? What is the difference? Yes. Remember what we said 20 minutes ago, 30 minutes ago. What did we say? How many games does Grandmaster lose by getting checkmated? Very few. But when the material difference is becoming that big, well, the game is over. For example, mo everyone, every decent player that has played enough would resign here. Why? He will see that he's getting checkmated or, or losing the queen. He can prevent checkmate. It can prevent checkmate, but at the price of huge material. And that's how chess games are really won. Not by, oh, I take and checkmate. But the, the black will resign here, not because he's getting checkmate, but because to avoid checkmate, he has to suffer substantial material losses. And that's exactly the move. 95 is going to win a lot of material or checkmate. So what was our process here? And that's why I said I really liked what we had before. 
the process of a chess player is this. Looking at the position with white, one is saying, oh wow, queen take h7 is checkmate. Will be checkmate. What is the obstacle? Knight on f6. Can I somehow make that knight disappear? If I can make the knight disappear, it would be checkmate, right? That's how we build it. How would I want to make the knight disappear, by the way, in the most forcing way or not? Always we want to look at most forcing way. Let's look at another square. And again, this is what we will be doing. Most of our puzzles, all the puzzles next week, are going to be with this topic. Let's look at such position. I'll make it very, very, very simple. Not putting away too many pieces, not making, not making it more complicated than it should be. OK, we have a position with opposite castles. Now, position with opposite castles, right? White castle to the queen side, black castle to the king side. King side. What is the character of positions with opposite castles? What would you say in general? Would it be a more solid play? Would it be more aggressive play? Would we go for, yes? Yes? More aggressive, why? So, we c so, so it's easier for us to attack, right? Because we can move forces on one side of the board and our king can stay. And our, <laughs> it's okay. And our king can stay safe on the other side. I thought I, thought I said something ridiculously <laughs> wrong. Like I said, okay, I'll take it back. But okay, it wasn't me. Okay. So we have a position, very classical one, with castle on opposite side, which means we want to th consider attacking. Yes? Excellent. It's not the best move, but it's the right way of thinking. It's not the right move, but it's the right way of thinking. Excellent. Queen h6. What are you threatening with queen h6? Because if it takes the queen... Oh, it cannot take the queen. Yeah. It's pinned. No, it cannot take. So, but what would black play after queen h6? What would black play? Because that's excellent. That's how we think. Is he going to resign? No. So what will he play? Well, what is the threat after queen h6? I, I want to put it without moving the pieces. What is the threat after queen h6? Taking the rook. Huh? Making Ma queen take g7 checkmate. OK, so how is black going to prevent it? He has to prevent it. If not, he's checkmated. If not, yeah, he resigned. Yes? But, but, but I will take, I will take. Queen on h6, threatening to take on g7. Yes? Um, do you do rook and e8? But, but the, the, the train left that station. You will move the rook. I, I will still play queen take g7. You are making effort to make space for your king, but no, you need five moves to get the king away from there. Yes? G6, thank you, G6. Queen H6. White, we have to think that way. There is no other way to play chess, no other way. White wants to play queen takes G7. You can move the rook, you can move this rook, you can do flip-flops, whatever you want, unless you can defend this pawn. For example, if the queen was here, you could have told me, OK, I'm going to play queen e5, defending. OK, we can discuss that. That's a decent move. g6 is the only move, very good job. Only move to de prevent checkmate. OK, you can give your queen for a check for one move, but play queen here, he will take it. Other than that, queen g7 is checkmate. But g6 is a good move, and not very easy for white how to continue. So now we understood, all of us, there is a threat of checkmating there, but black can play g6 and defend. Does white have a way to overcome that? Does white have a way to win here pretty much by force? He does. 
Your job is to tell me how. Any thought? Which move you want to play? Queen G5? Yeah, Queen G5. Same story. Right. I'll give you one minute, two minutes, and if not, Okay, let's start with that. Excellent job. Very good. Check. Okay, no, no, we are not dependent on the opponent making a mistake. I mean, yeah, chess games are being won like that, but in a different type of. We play queen h6, you can say, oh, maybe my opponent will forget queen g7. No, he will play g6, that was suggested here. Rook takes g7. If king h8, well, first of all, white took a huge pawn, but now queen h6 and how to prevent checkmate on h7? I don't know, because there is no way. So black is going to take. Now what? Yes. Queen g5 check. Queen g5 check. How many moves does black have in this position? One. Now what? Queen f6 check. How many moves black has here? One. And now? G1. Well, queen g2 and then checkmate. Exactly. So, there was tiny possibility for black on the first move to go king h6. King h8 and queen h6. Checkmate. Very, very false line. This is the difference between allowing the opponent to get out of a threat or just forcing it. Again, our straight line. And those are basic patterns against a king that already castled. And we will take a pause here. We'll tell Ben maybe to call it chapter one. And we will continue that next week with, well, chapter two or something like that. Mm -hmm.